in, in all the president's bankers about this and 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 did you know it, it, that is the nonfiction book I've just came out with is that the um there there was a time where there there was a, a kind of solidarity of what people needed for the economy to grow and what the government was willing to provide and and what they were willing to do to keep bankers accountable there's always been close personal ties personal connections you know same school same clubs intermarriages friendships protege mentorship relationships between the white house and wall street but there was a time in our past and i think the hope is to look into it between the 30s and the 70s where at least even though everyone, all the people in that equation wanted power, whether it was American power globally, politically, whether it was financial power globally from an economic and trade standpoint, they still were able to see the public good. They were still able to sort of walk into gum and see a public interest that could only be served if there was some restraint. If, if people, you know, went, went to jail, if they committed fraud or crimes, if banks were made smaller or at least divided from the risks they could take, if they took too much risk and the, the government or society was on the hook for it. So, so there was a time when things were more stable, there was growth in the country for individuals, and, and these people still were able to make money. So, so the kind of hope lies in the past. The unfortunate thing is that, you know, from the 70s and 80s and certainly through on today, no matter who was in government, whether it was, you know, Republican, Democrat, you know, Carter, Reagan, Bush, Clinton, Bush, Obama, doesn't matter because those alliances with Wall Street have really been working towards the detriment of not just us, but, but also the world. And so we need to dial that back. There is an answer in our past, but there's also a, a very, very strong possibility if we don't look at that, if we don't try to be better than our past, not even, not even like that aspect of our past because it had problems, that we are going to suffer wider consequences. So there's some hope in that, but there's also a, a warning in that. Again, I've been asking the questions, what, what else is on your radar? Um, you know, the, 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 the worrisome thing, and we talked a little bit about it, you did ask this, so I'll just answer it again, is, is the Ukraine situation only because it's, it's, it's being perceived as more of an ideological fight, a new Cold War and so forth, when in fact it is really a, a financial fight. It's, it's a globalization of financial fight, and it's, it's who gets the, the calling rights to that particular part of the world. You know, Russia has been moving its banks into the Ukraine. Um, European and American banks have kind of retreaded after the 2008 crash, and they're looking to come back into that area because it's a very good outpost to, to Eastern Europe. Um, and so there, there's a lot of problems that could result in that. There's also problems that could result in what's happening um, in Asia with respect to additional speculation, and, and not so much you know China's growth or not growth and all the things that are headlined in the in the media, but but what happens with, with the real speculation where where China is trying to really compete to some extent its banks with American and European banks and for example expanding um, types of transactions and alliances with Latin America we've seen that story play before in the 70s you know American banks went after Latin America created a whole lot of debt in that situation we had a third world debt crisis in in the 1980s which was the start of a tremendous amount of bailouts that we you know have, have manifested and, and and just gone bigger since that period of time and now i see that coming from uh this other side of the world it's like it's like the competition in in, in finance and in, in globalized finance is to try and sort of soak all the rest of the countries from the standpoint of the countries that have more concentrated wealth or financial institutions um and then try to have the rest of the sure world. you know new york wants to be london and then you've got you know, yeah. Germany wanting to get, you know, to be the new uh, London. And then just, it's like, who can whore themselves out the best? Who can de devalue the currency the fastest while actuarying, shutting down all your competition and small business so you can pump up uh, your fraudulent balance sheet? I mean, it is a race to the bottom, as uh, Ross Perot said. And, 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 that, and that's really the main worry, that, that you know, th this race to the bottom, this, this idea of, Sort of plundering commodities or, or or different types of local establishments as 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 banks grow has been something that has been intrinsic, particularly um, since what I call the the age of financial capitalism, which I think started a hundred years ago with, with with J P Morgan and the Fed and sort of this idea that there would be backing to bad bets, and and that idea has been really solid through all of what we've seen, all the negatives that we've seen with concentrated banks becoming bigger, with smaller banks getting eaten up. With concentrated businesses becoming bigger and smaller businesses um, getting eaten up or or dying in in the process, and, and the funds, the liquidity, the money that goes into these larger institutions gives them a bigger benefit as well. Because if you're getting, for example, zero percent um, money 
then you know you can do a lot of damage if if the, if you have no accountability to even the money that you're getting. And then, and then when they lose that money, it, it just gets bailed out on top of it. Well, well exactly. I mean, the fact that the Federal Reserve has a four point two trillion dollar balance sheet, there is no. We are not in a time of war. We are not really in the time of any sort of. Um, you know, physical violent danger, for example, on our country, and yet the financial danger is so big that this is the largest amount of subsidies that the Federal Reserve has ever provided the largest banks in the history of its existence. Well, and look, this is done by design. It's the Japan route. Japan, as you know, is the test. 20 years of recession, depression, and they're doing all this on purpose, in my view. And uh, there's a method to their madness. I think it's going to blow out of control. Uh, and cause war and famine and revolution. They think they can ride that to even more police state, use the revolutions they cause as a way to have civil wars or internal police actions. Uh, I mean, I think that's the master plan. I want to ask you about that and talk some about your new book, On the Other Side with Nomi Prince. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com. The goldsmiths, people don't want to carry their gold around, so you'd go in and they'd give you receipts that were good for business around the town that you could go redeem so you didn't get robbed. And then they would have your name and everything and it really stopped criminals from knocking you over the head. But pretty soon the goldsmiths started loaning out a lot more paper than they actually had gold. And that's where the Rothschilds came in and took over Europe. And it's the same story over and over again. People that can create fraudulent instruments can buy the courts, buy the police, and then pretty soon they take over everything. Nomi Prince, tell us about your book. I haven't read it yet. I've, met, uh, I've read two of your other nonfiction books. Tell, uh, tell us about your book and how folks get it. Um, it's, it's called All the President's Bankers, The Hidden Alliances That Drive American Power. Um, it's on Amazon. You can also get some more information and excerpts on it on my website. I have excerpts about the IMF and the World Bank evolution and, and how that impacts today, um, as well as all of the... Uh, so this is a... This is a uh, uh, Nonfiction. Didn't you just write a, a novel too? Yeah, I'm just I'm just pumping them out, Alex. Now I want to read this book. So <laughs> tell me about it. Um, well, actually, no. The, the, the thing is, um, this nonfiction came out of a scene in my novel Black Tuesday that was out uh, a couple of years ago, and there was a scene in it where the six bankers in 1929 got together at the Morgan Bank and figured out how to save themselves, um, after, and it didn't work so well. But all of those banks still exist today. So at the end of the day, we had a Great Depression. These banks survived, became bigger, and they are what they are today: J.P. Morgan, Chase, Citigroup, and so forth. So um, it, it kind of started with a novel, but but all the president's bankers is really my um it was my way to use that that little kernel and examine all of the relationships throughout all of the presidential libraries in the country over the presidents that have been presidents over the last hundred years and the relationships with the six main bankers of the time and look at how they they coordinated what they wanted and needed from each other and were the sort of mutually interdependent entities in wall street and washington there's no division they're the same you know components of the same political financial power structure and, and how they operated so there's a lot of documents in there that, that i examine through different archives i didn't want anyone to say oh you know you're just talking about these people it's a conspiracy what it's not i have all of the information it's well documented in the book um there's 70 pages of, of footnotes that were kind of a real pain to put together the footnotes are always the hardest part and there's a lot of them but it's really to show people there's there's real meat here we're not just talking about this stuff there's there's this real... isn't our opinion you know what's interesting exactly, exactly alex that's exactly right yeah. i get real busy and thought this was a novel and i had just said please get naomi prince on about all the crises but now that i know about this book send me a copy and, and, and come back on in like two weeks and let's go over this book. This sounds powerful. Nomi Prince, thank you so much for the time. Thank you so much, Alex. Take care. Thank you. Wow, great lady. Uh, just a great whistleblower. I mean, she was the top of her game going up in the company at the very top. And she said, I'm not going to be part of this. This is evil. One of the first people warning of the derivatives from the inside back in the like, 2003, was it, she left? Uh, so, great lady. Now, uh, I'll be back. Tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., and I'll be well-rested. I stayed up too late last night, and I was a little goofy today. I apologize for that. That happens occasionally. Sometimes it was good radio, but uh, there's just so much insane, important news. It's up on InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.com. BAE is developing Google Glass uh, spy app for spies. Of course they are. 
and a lot more. But the nightly news is tonight at 7 o'clock. Great job, crew. I want to thank all of you out there that listen and our sponsors. God bless you all. Pray you for peace in this country. GCN. Pray for non-offensive violence. Pray we don't have to defend today. ourselves, though, because we have a right and we will. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high...